Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is another one of the questions that I found in a pile of old questions from 2021, so five years ago. And I apologize for the lengthy delay in reply. I suspect that most of the people who asked those questions in those days found an answer. But the questions are very interesting and are of interest to many people, so let's take a look at them. This question comes from Dave Redding, N9VDT. And Dave is a school teacher. He says, our local middle school and high school, Brown County Schools, Nashville, Indiana, have a very active STEM program. Now, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So the hard sciences. A lot of people want to put art into that and call it STEAM. And there are reasons for doing that because the science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics call for creative skills. You may think that an engineer is not creative at all. I'll tell you what, that bridge design didn't come out of thin air. Somebody had to think of it and what it was. There's a lot of creativity in all of these fields. I'm an engineer, my wife's an artist, so I gotta push for both, STEAM. All right, he says, I wear many hats in the community and one role is I represent my daytime employer as a corporate sponsor of the STEM programs each year, STEM projects. I suggested to the school staff that we expand our STEM projects to include an amateur radio topic and wanted their feedback. To my surprise, the response was overwhelmingly positive. We'd love for you to establish an amateur radio club, they said. We would love for you to establish an amateur radio club. And there are several faculty members also interested in participating. That's very important. It would be great to hear your advice and suggestions to help us offer a well thought out program for this club. I understand you're very busy, sure seems like it. So any input would be appreciated. Now he's got a whole bunch of ideas already on here. Basically what it comes down to, you want to emulate the work of a group called Bark Jr. Now I wrote this article. I wrote this article in 1997 when I was heavily involved in Bark Jr. which took place on the Front Range and we live over on the Western Slope right now. But this is a two-page article in here. It says an auxiliary youth club success story that you can duplicate. That happens to be a picture of my daughter. She's in her 40s now, but this uh, same type of thing applies. So there's a couple things that come out of this. You can look it up in the September 1997 QST. What brings kids to an organization? The answer is other kids. You've got a chicken and egg problem. If you want kids to be there, they should be there. Second, they want guidance. Today's kids need to be guided over to what to do. You can't just throw things at them and expect them to figure it out. They love making. Okay, so somehow connecting what they're doing to their Arduino projects or their robots or something like that can be very, very interesting. Radio is no longer a mystery to youth because they've all got cell phones and all cell phones are a radio. Okay, so they've gone far, far, far beyond what just a handheld radio will do. And handing a kid a handheld radio once he passes his test, you're throwing him to the wolves. So you need to do something every week. Uh, what Rip and Ellie Van Winkle did was to, they started in the local middle school and then taught a class so that the kids could get their, well, at the time, novice licenses, technician now, okay? And you get that tech license and then they started a separate, you can do this on school premises, probably better, but at their home, they had a weekly club on Saturdays. And there was always some group activities. There were classes that they held. So we had a whole bunch of people who were at different levels. So we were running uh, novice, general, uh, novice tech in general at the same time. Okay, now novice has been done away with, so tech was the entry level license then as it still is today. Then there were activities or a demonstration, something they could see, get their hands on. Okay, everything from lining up everybody in the room and then having one person touch the capacitor leads and everybody in the whole room felt the shock from that. That's an interesting feeling. 
Uh, if I had a pacemaker, I'm not sure I would have want to participate in. The other thing that they did was they made, they actually formed it as a club called Bark Jr. for Boulder Amateur Radio Club Junior Division. They elected a kid as president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Okay, treasury, of course, was done right in conjunction with Ellie, who was a retired kindergarten teacher, who oversaw what they did. And of course, at every Saturday meeting, there was food. Got to have that. All right, so uh, what I'm trying to do is just outline a little bit of a structure. The kids these days, Gen Z, you're dealing with Gen Z, read up on Gen Z because they're sure different from us baby boomers. But in general, you need to have some structured activity laid out for them that they can do together. You also need to provide individual instruction for somebody who's not coming into their license as quickly as some of the others. And once they get their license, you want to continue to offer instruction to get them to their general. And in our case, uh, we were holding an amateur extra class and I was advanced at the time. And there was a 17 year old in there he went on to actually ace the ACT, one of six people in the country who got a perfect score. Very, very bright kid. I didn't care how bright he was. I wasn't going to let him beat me to extra. So I got my extra as soon as I could. Of course, back then we had to teach the code and all of this kind of thing. And I loved it. I worked in that program for 10 years until we got to the point where we moved out of the area. My daughter, my son, and my wife got their licenses through this. Now, uh, you are going to do a balance there of teaching electronics with teaching the test. Now, normally I don't encourage that at all. I would say you want to teach them so that when they become hams, they're hams, not just license holders. But in this case with the youngins, you need to get them their license so that they can start participating in the activities. And that's how they will learn ham radio. By the way, uh, 10 years, after I was into it, I got a hold of some of the very first Bark Juniors and 10 years later found out what they were doing, where they were, and found that ham radio tremendously influenced their choice of career. Several went on to become engineering students. I got interviews with them. It was in the QST online supplement at the time. I don't know if they still have that available or not, but it was just amazing. It was sort of a where are they now? And I was blown away with what these kids did with ham radio and what ham radio did with them. So there are a lot of things you can do. Now you're coming up with some great ideas here that are on the back. Let's see if I can just name them. Some of them prepared for the license. Lab projects, say a J poll, the MS director for ARES and RACES, uh, their own field day. Bark Jr. had its own field day separate from the adults. That was under adult supervision, I know. But my daughter loved it because she would stay up very late at night and she'd take the mid shift from like midnight to 4 or 5 a.m. And there's very little activity then. And so she just get on the radio and talk with people. Yeah, we're field day, we're in Boulder, we're class 2A, and what are you doing there? And then she had these wonderful conversations with people who loved talking to a gal who was at the time in her very young teens. She is a person who talks a lot. Field day, DMR, outfitting the students, Morse. VECs, oh, you, you'll be able to find people to set up VECs. With the VEC, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little secret. If the student's parents come up with the money, there's the $35 to get the license, plus you've got to register on the FCC website and get your FRN before you even take the test. I do not recommend giving that test away free. Now, $35 for some people can be a lot of money. But on the other hand, they're going to get it from their parents because a lot of these kids are too young to have jobs uh, outside of school. If they put their own money in it, it means something to them. Something that is free doesn't mean nearly as much. So let them come up with $35. Back in the day, it was like 15, you know, the test fee. And, and these kids, they're forking over money, okay? By our standards, it's not very much. By their standards, it's a huge amount, okay? And it commits them to what they are doing. And you can have scholarships if there truly are people in your group who just 
truly flat don't have the money. In some of the inner city schools, this will be true. You talk about Dayton Ham Fest there, that is not real close for you. There is something at the uh, Dayton Ham Fest called the Youth Forum, run by Carol Perry, I think, unless she's handed that off since then. And they pick youth from all over the country, and Bark Jr. always sent one. They pick youth to come speak, okay? Now, the uh, kids are going to need to be chaperoned through something like Dayton. Uh, Dayton had last year 33,000 attendees. It was crowded. And so you've got to have some way of checking with the kids or one adult and two kids or one adult and one kid or something like that uh, to go to an event like that. It'll be a lifetime, an experience of a lifetime for them. Okay, and you mentioned the digital and stuff like that. None of these are bad ideas. And by now you've probably used them all. What you're going to learn is what I learned when I started the Ask Dave series on this YouTube channel. I thought after maybe 10 or 12 Ask Dave videos, I'd be done. Well, we're in the 1200s now. There's always more that these kids can learn. And lastly, have the older kids teach the younger kids. The teacher always learns more than the student, right? So let the kids teach the kids. So this gives you a few ideas. Oh, never, ever, ever shut down a kid because they're not old enough to know that they're going to have some bad experiences in life. And if you shut down a kid, shut up, I'm going to send you out of class. You've lost them for life. You have to be very, very encouraging. This is why we need a little training for the people who are the adults who are coming on to help. Also, these days, the school district will probably require that they do a background check on them. That wasn't required back when I did it. But you have to be very careful, very positive, always positive. And instead of saying that doesn't work and say, well, we'll try that, but we could also try this too. And they can pick things that work. So. As you can tell, I was absolutely delighted to work with that group. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. There were occasional fun things that went on, but people came and go. People came and went. Elmers came and went. And by the way, we called the adults Elmers in there. Not mentors, but Elmers. We use the actual ham radio term. So I was an Elmer for a lot of kids. And, and my belief was if they asked a question, they should get an answer. And I had a kid uh, who was in his mid-teens who was going to take his technician test. And this was the last classroom session before that would happen. And it's my policy. If somebody asks me a question, I'm going to try and give them an answer. We were into Bessel functions by the time we ran out of time, okay? That's used to measure the bandwidth of an FM signal. So these kids are sharp. They're self-selected to be part of this group. They're there because they want to be. So give them everything that they can take. Not so fast that they can't take it. Help people along, be very sensitive to individual progress, and you will have a winner. It probably is already by this time, since this was four years ago. So I commend you for what you're doing with our nation's youth and how you're refilling the ranks of the ham radio operators in this country. So until we next meet, 73.